Praise the Most High God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and peace to everyone that's here in the name of Jesus. Peace to everyone that's watching us on the internet. And today's is one of the Lord's high and holy Sabbath days, and it's the Feast of Tabernacles. And one thing about these high days, they point to a bigger picture, and Tabernacles represents the gathering of the Lord's people. And it's, it's amazing he would give you a, a high day to celebrate a gathering of his people, knowing that he was going to scatter you throughout the four corners of the earth. So you can't gather someone unless they've been scattered. That's right. And that's what we're going to learn. We're going to get some understanding about the Feast of Tabernacles, because one thing that we do know is we're here for a reason, okay? And we, there's plenty of other things we could be doing other than up in here on Sunday night, but we know why we're here. We're going to get some understanding of why we're here, because this is a commandment from God that we keep this high day. So let's, we're going to pick it up in Leviticus 23, because this is the Feast of the Lord, and the Feast of the Lord are located in Leviticus chapter 23, which is where we always go to get the feast. Leviticus 23, and we're going to pick it up at verse 1, 23 and 1. Okay, go ahead. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Speak unto the children of Israel, and say unto them concerning the feast of the Lord. So now here we go again. These are the feasts of the Lord, not the feasts of the Jews. We always have to reiterate this, that this is the Lord talking to Moses. So these are not the feasts of the Jews. These are the feasts of the Lord. Go ahead. Which ye shall proclaim to be holy convocations. Even these are my feasts. So he said it again. These are, and the Lord spoke to Moses. Concerning the feasts of the Lord, even these are my feasts. And on these feasts, you have to have a holy convocation or a holy gathering, which is why we're here today. Go ahead. Six days shall work be done, but the seventh day is the Sabbath of rest. And holy convocation, ye shall do no work therein. It is the Sabbath of the Lord in all your dwellings. These are the feasts of the Lord. Even holy convocations, which ye shall proclaim in their seasons. So he said it again. These are the feasts of the Lord. He said it three times. These are my feasts. These are the feasts of the Lord. You go proclaim them in their season, and you're supposed to have a holy gathering on that day. So let's skip down to the feast that we're dealing with this evening. Let's skip down to verse 33. Okay, go ahead. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Speak unto the children of Israel, saying, The fifteenth day of this seventh month shall be the Feast of Tabernacles for seven days unto the Lord. So the fifteenth day of the seventh month. This is the seventh month according to the Lord's calendar. This is the seventh month. And when the sun went down, that would be the fifteenth day of the seventh month, which is tonight or today. And this is why we're here for the Feast of Tabernacles. Go ahead. On the first day shall be in holy convocation. Ye shall do no servile work therein. So the first day of the Feast of Tabernacles is a holy convocation, which is what we're doing tonight. You shall do no servile work therein, which means you don't do any work for hire, or you don't do any work to get paid for. But go ahead. Seven days ye shall offer an offering made by fire unto the Lord. On the eighth day shall be an holy convocation unto you. And ye shall offer an offering made by fire unto the Lord. It is a solemn assembly. And ye shall do no servile work therein. So the 15th day of the seventh month is the Feast of Tabernacles for seven days. And then on the eighth day shall be in holy convocation. You shall make an offering, offer an offering made by fire unto the Lord. It is a solemn assembly. You shall do no servile work therein. So on the eighth day of Tabernacles is also a Sabbath. And that's a high day as well. We're going to deal with that the following next Sunday night at the same time. Okay, go ahead. These are the feast of the Lord, which ye shall proclaim to be holy convocations, to offer an offering made by fire unto the Lord, a burnt offering, and a meat offering, a sacrifice, and drink offerings, everything upon his day. So he said it again. How many times does the Lord have to say, these are my feasts? These are my feasts. These are the feasts of the Lord. Go ahead, verse 38. Beside the Sabbaths of the Lord, and beside your gifts, and beside all your vows, and beside all your free will offerings, which you give unto the Lord, also in the fifteenth day of the seventh month, 
when ye have gathered, gathered in the fruit of the land, ye shall keep a feast unto the Lord seven days. On the first day shall be a Sabbath, and on the eighth day shall be a Sabbath. So the fifteenth day, the seventh month, when you have gathered in the fruit of the land, you shall keep a feast unto the Lord seven days. On the first day shall be a Sabbath, and on the eighth day shall be a Sabbath. And we know that gathering this fruit is more than just gathering fruit. This is all about people. But the Lord set up this high day just so you can have an understanding of his big picture. Because this day represents the day he's going to gather his people. He's going to come back and get his people out of captivity and bring them unto him and teach them the rest of his ministry, his other three and a half years. Let's keep reading. Go ahead. And ye shall take you on the first day the boughs of goodly trees, branches of palm trees, and the boughs of thick trees, and willows of the brook. And ye shall rejoice before the Lord your God seven days. And ye shall keep it a feast unto the Lord seven days in the year. It shall be a statue forever in your generations. Ye shall celebrate it in the seventh month. So this feast of the Lord is a statue forever. This whole world is supposed to be keeping this feast. If you call yourself a Christian, you're supposed to be keeping this feast as well. But because you've thrown the Sabbath day out of the window, then you have no understanding. So if you throw the Sabbath day out the window, then you've got to throw the Sabbath days out of the window too. So you have no understanding what this feast represents. Go ahead. Ye shall dwell in booths seven days. All that are Israelites born shall dwell in booths. You shall dwell in booths seven days. We're going to address that next, next Sunday. But go ahead. That your generations may know that I made the children of Israel to dwell in booths when I brought them out of the land of Egypt. I am the Lord your God. And Moses declared unto the children of Israel the feast of the Lord. Once again, even at the end of the chapter, he's always stressing these are the feasts of the Lord. Okay? Let's go to Exodus 23. So we know we're supposed to have tabernacles, the feast of tabernacles for seven days. You shall have a feast unto the Lord. We know the first day is a Sabbath and the last day is a Sabbath. So anything in between there, if y'all want to feast, let me know. I'll be there. Exodus 23. And we're going to pick it up at verse 14. Exodus 23 and 14. Okay, go ahead. Three times thou shalt keep a feast unto me in the year. So three times we're supposed to keep a feast to the Lord in the year. Go ahead. Thou shalt keep the feast of unleavened bread. Feast of unleavened bread, which we did back in the spring. Go ahead. Thou shalt eat unleavened bread seven days, as I commanded thee, in the time appointed of the month Abib. For in it thou camest out from Egypt, and none shall appear before me empty. And the feast of harvest. And the feast of harvest, which is Pentecost. Go ahead. The first fruits of thy labors, which thou hast sown in the field, and the feast of ingathering. And the feast of ingathering, which is tabernacles, and we're going to show you that. Go ahead. Which is in the end of the year, when thou hast gathered in thy labors out of the field. Three times in the year, all thy males shall appear before the Lord God. Okay, let's go to Deuteronomy 31. So three times a year, all the males are supposed to appear before the Lord. The Feast of Unleavened Bread, the Feast of Harvest, and the Feast of End Gathering. Which is what are we, which, which we are celebrating tonight. Now let's go to Deuteronomy 31. Because this end gathering is a big picture. Deuteronomy 31. And we're going to pick it up at 16. Because you can't gather a people if they're not scattered. And the Lord saw the results of his, this nation of Israel. Because after, <clears throat> after he gave Moses all the commandments... And Moses reiterated everything in Deuteronomy. The Lord had a little sidebar discussion with Moses, and this is what he said. Deuteronomy 31 and 16. Go ahead. And the Lord said unto Moses, Behold, thou shalt sleep with thy fathers, and this people will rise up and go a whoring after gods of the strangers of the land, whither they go to be among them, and will forsake me and break my covenant which I have made with them. So this is before they even got into the land. The Lord took Moses to the side and said, look, man, you're going to die. And when you're gone, <laughs> these people are going to go buck wild. 
They're going to start serving strange gods. They're going to forsake me and break my covenant. Go ahead. Then mine anger shall be kindled against them in that day, and I will forsake them. He said, then I'm going to be mad. And like my grandfather used to say, I'm going to get you, I'm going to get you, I'm going to get you. Keep reading. And I will hide my face from them, and they shall be devoured. And many evils and troubles shall befall them, so that they will say in that day, Are not these evils come upon us, because our God is not among us? And I will surely hide my face in that day for all the evils which they shall have wrought, and that they are turned unto other gods. Now therefore write ye this song for you, and teach it the children of Israel. Put it in their mouths, that this song may be a witness for me, against the children of Israel. So the Lord told Moses, he said, look, I want you to teach these stiff-necked people a song. And they were singing a song that was talking about their life from the, from the beginning to the end. And they didn't even take it to heart. Because if you read the song of Moses, which is Deuteronomy 32, if you read it, it'll tell you, what, it'll tell you exactly what happened to the people. And they were singing it like it wasn't nothing. It's like they was drunk. You ever been to a party, you drunk, and you singing a song, don't know what... And the song could be about you. And you don't even know. Keep reading. For when I shall have brought them into the land which I swear unto their fathers, that floweth with milk and honey, and they shall have eaten and filled themselves, and waxen fat, then will they turn unto other gods, and serve them, and provoke me, and break my covenant. Okay, skip down to verse 24. And it came to pass... When Moses had made an end of writing the words of this law in the book until they were finished, that Moses commanded the Levites, which bear the ark of the covenant of the Lord, saying, Take this book of the law and put it in the side of the ark of the covenant of the Lord your God, that it may be there for a witness against thee. For I know thy rebellion and thy stiff neck. Behold, while I am yet alive with you this day, Ye have been rebellious against the Lord, and how much more after my death? So Moses is telling them, look, as long as I was living, y'all was acting up and rebelling against the Lord. So how much more <clears throat> that y'all going to be rebellious after I die? <laughs> Verse 28, go ahead. Gather unto me all the elders of your tribes and your officers, that I may speak these words in their ears, and call heaven and earth to record against them. For I know that after my death, ye will utterly corrupt yourselves and turn aside from the way which I have commanded you. And evil will befall you in the latter days because ye will do evil in the sight of the Lord to provoke him to anger through the work of your hands. Well, you see how the Lord is dealing with Israel? He already know your people, <laughs> exactly how y'all are. Let's go to Isaiah 43. Because he told them they're going to be worshiping other gods, And the Lord said, I'm going to do you in if you do that. But he knew that they was going to do. That's why he gave them this feast, the yeah. Feast of En Gavin, because he knew he was going to scatter them, and he knew he was going to have to come back and get them. Because yeah, right. he caused the end from the beginning. Isaiah 43, and we're going to pick it up at verse 42. Isaiah 43 and 22. Okay, go ahead. But thou hast not called upon me, O Jacob, but thou hast been wary of me, O Israel. Thou hast not brought me the small cattle of thy burnt offerings, neither hast thou honored me with thy sacrifices. I have not caused thee to serve with an offering, nor wearied thee with incense. Thou hast brought me no sweet cane with money, neither hast thou filled me with the fat of thy sacrifices. But thou hast made me to serve with thy sins, thou hast wearied me with thine iniquities. I... Even I am he that blotteth out thy transgressions for mine own sake, and will not remember thy sins. Put me in remembrance, let us plead together, declare thou that thou mayest be justified. Thy first father have sinned, and thy teachers have transgressed against me. Therefore I have profaned the princes of the sanctuary, and have given Jacob to the curse, and Israel to reproaches. So what did he tell Israel? If you forsake me, I'm going to forsake you. I'm going to hide my face, and when all this evil befall you, then you're going to start thinking, man, where's God at? He was with us. What did we do? 
you sinned against him. Therefore, I have profaned the princes of the sanctuary and have given Jacob to the curse. Let's go look at that curse. Deuteronomy 28. Deuteronomy chapter 28. Because you can't gather a people if they haven't been scattered. And the Lord pronounced this curse on Israel before they even got into the land. And they didn't even think, they even laid it to heart. Moses was just bumping his gums, I guess. And even he put it in a song. In case they couldn't understand the words, he put it in a song, a rap song, so they can they can learn that. And they still didn't get it. Deuteronomy 28, and pick it up at verse 15. And let's look at this curse that the Lord put up on Jacob. Go ahead. But it shall come to pass, if thou wilt not hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God, to observe to do all his commandments and his statutes, which I command thee this day, that all these curses shall come upon thee and overtake thee. So he says, so come to pass, if thou wilt not hearken to the voice of the Lord thy God, to observe, not only look at him, but you got to do him too, okay? You can't be a hearer of the word, you have to do it. If you don't do what I tell you, all these curses are going to come up on thee and overtake thee. And we ain't going to read them all because it's a bunch of them. But we're going to hit and run a little bit. Skip down to verse 25. Go ahead. The Lord shall cause thee to be smitten before thine enemies. Thou shalt go out one way against them and flee seven ways before them and shall be removed into all the kingdoms of the earth. So the Lord going to cause you to be smitten before your enemies? And he shall cause you to be removed into all the kingdoms of the earth. That sounds like a scattering to me, right? Remove, that means somebody then took you from somewhere and removed you to some other spot. Skip down to verse 32. Let's see what else. Go ahead. Thy sons and thy daughters shall be given unto another people, and thine eyes shall look and fail with longing for them all the day long, and there shall be no might in thine hand. So your children are going to be taken from you and given to somebody else. That sounds like another scattering to me. Read verse 33. Go ahead. The fruit of thy land and all thy labors shall a nation which thou knowest not eat up, and thou shalt be only oppressed and crushed all way. So the fruit of your land, all your labors, another nation is going to eat up, and you're going to be oppressed always. 36. Go ahead. The Lord shall bring thee and thy king, which thou shalt set over thee, unto a nation which neither thou nor thy fathers have known. And there shalt thou serve other gods, wood and stone. So not only is he going to scatter you, but whatever nation you're in, you're going to find yourself serving their God. I don't care where Israel is, they are serving another God. Whether you be in Jamaica, Cuba, Haiti, the Bahamas, all over Europe, you serving another God, bottom line. You ain't serving the God of Israel. Because the Lord said he was going to scatter, and you're going to serve wood and stone. Verse 37, go ahead. And thou shalt become an astonishment, a proverb, and a byword among all nations, whither the Lord shall lead thee. So wherever you scatter that, you ain't going to be an Israelite. You're going to be something else. And they're going to call you so many names that you're going to start believing that that's what you are too. And they're going to have so much control over you that every 10 or 20 years, you're going to be called something else. Irish man come over here. He was Irish from the day that he was born. 20, 30 years back, three or four centuries ago, he was still Irish. But you, we've been called so many different names that it's amazing. And when you try to get out of that, they're going to remind you who you are. I don't care how light-skinned that you think you are. They're going to let you know who exactly who you are. Or how much one quarter this or three quarters that. Wherever you at, they're going to let you know exactly who you are. Skip down to, read, 30, read 37? Yes. Yeah. Skip down to verse 41. Go ahead. Thou shalt beget sons and daughters, but thou shalt not enjoy them. For they shall go into captivity. So your sons and daughters are going to captivity. That's another scattering. Go ahead, verse 45. Moreover, all these curses shall come upon thee, 
and shall pursue thee and overtake thee till thou be destroyed, because thou hearkenest not unto the voice of the Lord thy God to keep his commandments and his statutes which he commanded thee. And they shall be upon thee for a sign and for a wonder and upon thy seed forever. So all these curses that's come upon this one nation of people is for a sign and a wonder. It's an identifying mark to let everybody else know who the children of Israel are. And believe me, there's more people out there that know who you are than you do. That's right. Skip down to verse 64. Go ahead. And the Lord, and the Lord shall scatter thee among all people. So who's going to scatter you among all people? The Lord. Because he said, if you disobey me, that's exactly what I'm going to do. I'm going to scatter you among all people. Go ahead. From the one end of the earth, even unto the other. From one end of the earth to the other. From north to south, east to west, you there. I ain't seen nobody in Iceland, but if you got some people there, I'm quite sure Israel is up there too. Because <laughs> the Lord said, all nations, right? Iceland is a nation. It's cold, but Israel adapts and they overcome. <laughs> Go ahead. And there thou shalt serve other gods, which neither thou nor thy fathers have known, even wood and stone. So wherever you are, you're going to be serving wood and stone. Wherever the Lord scatters you, he's, you're going to be serving wood and stone. But here's the meat of it, verse 68. Go ahead. And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again with ships. By the way thereof I spake unto thee. Thou shalt see it no more again, and there ye shall be sold unto your enemies for bondmen and bondwomen, and no man shall buy you. So this is the only, what only nation of people who came to captivity in ships? Israel. Because this is the curse that he passed upon Israel. So this is the identity. If you don't know any of, these, any of these other curses, you can identify with this one right here. Because we are the only people that got over here in ships. We're the only ones. And if we lay claim to this, we can lay claim, just read up, and we can get all the rest of them too. The statistics speak for themselves. That's right. Psalm 78. So these are the curses that were put up on Jacob. The Lord said he was going to scatter his people. That's why we're here for the tabernacles, because tabernacles represents the gathering of a scattered people. Deuteronomy, I mean Psalm 78. Psalm 78, and we're going to pick it up at verse 55. Okay, go ahead. He cast out the heathen also before them and divided them an inheritance by line and made the tribes of Israel to dwell in their tents. So when, he, when Israel got into the promised land, they knocked off all those nations and took that land over. But what happened when they got big and fat? Go ahead. Yet they tempted and provoked the Most High God and kept not his testimonies, but turned back and dealt unfaithfully like their fathers. They were turned aside like a deceitful bow, for they provoked him to anger with their high places, and moved him to jealousy with their graven images. When God heard this, he was rough and greatly abhorred Israel. So much for God loving, huh? He can hate too. Because what does abhorred mean? That's some, he said greatly abhorred. That's some serious hate. Go ahead. So that he forsook the tabernacle of Shiloh, the tent which he placed among men, and delivered his strength into captivity and his glory into the enemy's hand. He gave his people over also unto the sword and was rough with his inheritance. The fire consumed their young men and their maidens were not given to marriage. Their priests fell by the sword and their widows made no lamentation. Okay, let's go to Leviticus 26. So you see the end result of idolatry. The Lord don't like it. Because he put his people into captivity over idolatry. Because they forsook the one and true living God. Let's go to Leviticus 26. So we're going to read. We're reading about a people that's been scattered. But eventually, you know, we got to get them back. He's going to come back and, 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 and gather his people. Because that's why we're here tonight. To celebrate this high day that represents the gathering of Israel. Amen. 
Leviticus 26. So don't worry about it. It won't be long. It won't be long. I remember it was a song we used to sing in the, in the Baptist church I went to. It won't be long till Jesus comes again. You can count the years as months, the months as weeks. Anyway, <laughs> Leviticus 26, and let's start at verse 14. Go ahead. But if you will not hearken unto me and will not do all these commandments, and if you shall despise my statutes, or if your soul abhor my judgments, so that you will not do all my commandments, but that you break my covenant, I will also do this unto you. I will even appoint over you terror, consumption, and the burning og that shall consume the eyes and cause sorrow of heart. And ye shall sow your seed in vain, for your enemies shall eat it. And I will set my face against you, and ye shall be slain before your enemies. They that hate you shall reign over you, and ye shall flee when none pursueth you. And if you will not yet for all this hearken unto me, then I will punish you seven times more for your sins. So you're going to flee with none pursuit. You, you running scared. Ain't nobody, what you running for, man? Ain't nobody chasing you. But that's the mindset the Lord is going to give you because you disobeyed him. Go ahead. And I will break the pride of your power, and I will make your heaven as iron and your earth as brass, and your strength shall be spent in vain, for your land shall not yield her increase. Neither shall the trees of the land yield their fruits. So you be working all day and don't get nothing. It's like working for peanuts. You all day and you don't get nothing. 21, go ahead. And if you walk contrary unto me and will not hearken unto me, I will bring seven times more plagues upon you according to your sins. So you see the Lord ain't playing. Verse 25, go ahead. And I will bring a sword upon you that shall avenge the quarrel of my covenant. And when ye are gathered together within your cities, I will send a pestilence among you, and ye shall be delivered into the hand of the enemy. There's that captivity again being scattered. Go ahead. And when I have broken the staff of your bread, ten women shall bake your bread in one oven, and they shall deliver you your bread again by weight, and ye shall eat and not be satisfied. And if you will not for all this hearken unto me, but walk contrary unto me, then I will walk contrary unto you also in fury. And I, even I, will chastise you seven times for your sins. And ye shall eat the flesh of your sons, and the flesh of your daughters shall you eat. And I will destroy your high places, and cut down your images, and cast your carcasses upon the carcasses of your idols, and my soul shall abhor you. Ooh, we go ahead. And I will make your cities waste and bring your sanctuaries unto desolation. And I will not smell the savor of your sweet odors. And I will bring the land into desolation and your enemies which dwell therein shall be astonished at it. And I will scatter you among the heathen and will draw out a sword after you and your land shall be desolate and your cities waste. Then shall the land enjoy her Sabbaths as long as it lies desolate and ye be in your enemy's land, even then shall the land rest and enjoy her Sabbath. So as worse as Israel was, they polluted the land. So the Lord said, look, let me get rid of y'all. At least the dirt can relax. Because as long as y'all in here, it's bad news. It's always there goes the neighborhood when we get there, right? There goes the land. They, the Lord kicked us out the land, and now the land can rest. Peacefulness with nobody there. Keep reading. As long as it lies desolate, it shall rest because it did not rest in your Sabbaths when ye dwelt upon it. And upon them that are left alive of you, I will send a faintness into their hearts in the lands of their enemies. And the sound of a shaken leaf shall cause them, and they <laughs> shall flee as fleeing from a sword, and they shall fall when none pursue it. Now that's a running scare right there. Leaves fall and you run it. Keep reading. And they shall fall one upon another, as it were before a sword, when none pursueth. And ye shall have no power to stand before your enemies. And ye shall perish among the heathen, and the land of your enemies shall eat you up. And they that are left of you shall pine away in their iniquity in your enemies' lands. 
and also in the iniquities of their fathers shall they pine away with them. So let's go to Daniel 9. So you see these curses the Lord put upon us. First, he's going to scatter you. He always say, I'm going to scatter you, and wherever you're at, you're going to suffer. But there's some hope. There's some light at the end of the tunnel. But we got to put our thing on this people that scattered first. Daniel 9, and pick it up at verse 3. Because if the Lord pronounced something, believe me, it's going to happen. And if he give you a pass, if, whenever he pronounced something, if he give you a pass, he say, okay, I'm not going to do it on your life. I'm going to do it in your son's life. But I'm going to do it, though. But you may not see it, but it's going to be done. Daniel 9, and pick it up at verse 3. Go ahead. And I set my face unto the Lord God to seek by prayer and supplications with fasting and sackcloth and ashes. And I prayed unto the Lord my God and made my confession and said, O Lord, the great and dreadful God, keeping the covenant and mercy to them that love him and to them that keep his commandments. So how do you get love and mercy from God? You keep his commandments, right? This is what Daniel's praying. You keep his commandments. Go ahead. We have sinned and have committed iniquity and have done wickedly and have rebelled even by departing from thy precepts and from thy judgments. Neither have we hearkened unto thy servants, the prophets, which spake in thy name to our kings, our princes, and our fathers, and to all the people of the land. O Lord, righteousness belongeth unto thee, but unto us confusion of faces, as it is this day, to the men of Judah and to the inhabitants of Jerusalem, and to all Israel that are near and that are far off through all the countries whither the Lord has driven them because of their trespass, that they have trespassed against thee. So Daniel's doing some serious praying here. And we see that he said to Judah and to the inhabitants of Jerusalem and unto all Israel that are near and that are far off through all the countries whither thou has driven them because of what? The, the trespass that they have trespassed against thee. Go ahead. O Lord, to us belongeth confusion of face to our kings, to our princes, and to our fathers, because we have sinned against thee. To the Lord our God belong mercies and forgiveness, though we have rebelled against him. Neither have we obeyed the voice of the Lord our God to walk in his laws, which he set before us by his servants, the prophets. Yea, all Israel have transgressed thy law, even by departing that they might not obey thy voice. Therefore, the curse is poured upon us and the oath that is written in the law of Moses, the servant of God, because we have sinned against him. So what is that curse that's written in the law of Moses? We read it, Deuteronomy, we read it in Leviticus. And that's when Nebuchadnezzar came down. This was da Daniel was in captivity at this time, when the Lord sent Nebuchadnezzar and just destroyed Jerusalem and took the, rest, took the Jews back to Babylon, took them into captivity. But this is all good Old Testament stuff, which, you know, people don't like to read. But let's read some New Testament. It's not in the lesson, but go to Luke, Luke 21. Luke 21, because the Lord said the curse, the curse is on us. And they didn't, think, they didn't get no pass in Jesus' time because they was under Roman occupation. But even then, Jesus made a prophecy. Because he said he was going to scatter Israel into every nation under the sun. So as all these nations was developing, they made room for Israel. Because you got to be there. Because there was no America back then. But when America came around, here come Israel. <clears throat> Luke 21, and let's pick it up at verse 20. 21 and verse 20, go ahead. And when ye shall see Jerusalem compassed with armies, then know that the desolation thereof is near. Then let them which are in Judea flee to the mountains, and let them which are in the midst of it depart out. And let not them that are in the countries enter thereinto. For these be the days of vengeance, that all things which are written may be fulfilled. So all things that are written may be fulfilled, right? We was reading. Some of those curses, Israel going to be scattered. So Jesus is letting them know, 40 years later, this is going to happen to you. Go ahead. 
But woe unto them that are with child and to them that give suck in those days. For there shall be great distress in the land and wrath upon this people. And they shall fall by the edge of the sword and shall be led away captive into all nations. And Jerusalem shall be trodden down of the Gentiles until the times of the Gentiles be fulfilled. So they shall fall by the edge of the sword and shall be led away captive into all nations. And this happened in 70 A.D. And the dispersion continued throughout the years. One more place. Go to James chapter 1. So if this didn't happen, then why is James writing to these people right here if he didn't know what was going on? James chapter 1. And we're going to read one verse. Verse 1. James 1 and 1. <clears throat> James chapter 1 and verse 1. Okay, go ahead. James, a servant of God and of the Lord Jesus Christ, to the 12 tribes which are scattered abroad. So, go ahead. Greeting. So James is writing to who? The 12 tribes that are scattered. Didn't the Lord say he was going to scatter his people? So that's exactly what he did. He scattered his people. Now let's go back to Deuteronomy 30. Deuteronomy 30, because this Feast of Tabernacles represents the gathering of his people. So let's get to the gathering. We know we, know we scattered, and we know the end result that's light at the end of the tunnel. We will be gathered to the Lord, and he's going to come back in person and do it. Deuteronomy 30, and let's pick it up at verse 1. Deuteronomy 30 and verse 1. Okay, go ahead. And it shall come to pass, when all these things are come upon thee, the blessing and the curse which I have set before thee, and thou shalt call them to mind among all the nations, whither the Lord thy God have driven thee. So it shall come to pass when all these things have come upon thee. The blessing, we had the blessings for a minute. The curses, we here tonight, right? Go ahead. And shall return unto the Lord thy God, and shall obey his voice according to all that I command thee this day, thou and thy children, with all thine heart and with all thy soul, that then the Lord thy God will turn thy captivity and have compassion upon thee and will return and gather thee from all the nations whither the Lord thy God have scattered thee. So if we go back to the Lord, start doing his commandments, he's going to turn our captivity, he's going to come back in person, and he's going to gather the whole nation. It says that then the Lord thy God will have compassion upon thee and will return, that means he's coming back, and he's going to gather thee from all the nations, whether the Lord thy God has scattered thee. Go ahead. If any of thine be driven out unto the outmost parts of heaven, from thence will the Lord thy God gather thee, and from thence will he fetch thee. So if you up under a rock, he's going to get you. And he must be country because he's going to fetch you, right? The Lord going to fetch you from up under that rock. Let's go to um, Genesis 49. Let's see who this Lord is that's going to come back. Because we know it's Jesus, but we're going to let the book tell you. Because we don't want to do no speculating here. We're going to find out exactly who this is that's coming back in person to get his people. That's right. Genesis 49. And this is when Jacob was blessing his 12 sons. Mm -hmm. But look at the blessing that he gave Judah. Genesis 49 and verse 8. Go ahead. Judah, thou art he whom thy brethren shall praise. Thy hand shall be in the neck of thine enemies. Thy father's children shall bow down before thee. Judah is a lion's whelp. From the prey, my son, thou art gone up. He stooped down. He couched as a lion. And as an old lion, who shall rouse him up? The scepter shall not depart from Judah, nor a lawgiver from between his feet. Until Shiloh come, and unto him shall the gathering of the people be. So the scepter shall not depart from Judah. The scepter, only a king carries a scepter. Who's the king of Israel? Jesus. Who's the lion of Judah? Jesus. Jesus. Let's go to um, 
Luke chapter 1. And let's make sure of this. Because they say that's Old Testament. That can mean anything. Okay. Let's see what the book says. Luke chapter 1. Because we know Jesus came through the line of Judah. Luke chapter 1. And pick it up at verse 30. Go ahead. And the angel said unto her, Fear not, Mary, for thou hast found favor with God. And behold, thou shalt conceive in thy womb and bring forth a son and shall call his name Jesus. He shall be great and shall be called the son of the highest. And the Lord God shall give unto him the throne of his father David. And he shall reign over the house of Jacob forever. And of his kingdom there shall be no end. So we read in Genesis, the scepter shall not depart from Judah. And if Jesus is going to have a kingdom, he must be a king. Because you can't have a kingdom without a king. And it also said, unto Judah shall the gathering of the people be. So this is Jesus who's going to come back and gather the people. Go to Isaiah 27. And let's see where he's going to get us from. Because we scattered into every nation. But he's going to name some specific nations, and then he's going to give a broad general term to make sure he covered everything else. Isaiah 27, and we're going to pick it up at verse 12. We're going to read 12 and 13, Isaiah 27. <clears throat> and we're going to pick it up at verse 12. Okay, go ahead. And it shall come to pass in that day that the Lord shall beat off from the channel of the river unto the stream of Egypt, and ye shall be gathered one by one, O ye children of Israel. So it shall come to pass in that day that the Lord is going to do this, right? It says, the Lord shall beat off from the channel of the river unto the stream of Egypt, and ye shall be gathered one by one, O children of Israel. One by one, he's going to get every last Israelite. Whether you know it or not, you're going. I don't care what you call yourself. You don't think you're Israel? Come on. I'm going to get you. You coming. Go ahead. And it shall come to pass in that day that the great trumpet shall be blown, and they shall come which were ready to perish in the land of Assyria and the outcasts in the land of Egypt, and shall worship the Lord in the holy mount at Jerusalem. Flip back to Isaiah 11. Flip back to Isaiah chapter 11. Because he's going to get every last Israelite one by one. You coming. Isaiah 11, pick it up at verse 10. And let's get some of these nations we'll be scattered at. Go ahead. And in that day, there shall be a root of Jesse. Now, what's the root of Jesse? That's Jesus. The same one that said he's coming back to get his people. Go ahead. Which shall stand for an ensign of the people. To it shall the Gentiles seek, and his rest shall be glorious. And it shall come to pass in that day that the Lord shall set his hand again the second time to recover the remnant of his people. So it says the Lord shall set his hand again the second time. If he's, if he's going to do it a second time, he must have did it the first time. Right. And that first time was when, he was in, when they came up out of Egypt. But this time, this is going to be on a grander scale. It's going to be on a grander scale because he's going to take you from every nation that you're in. This is going to be a miraculous gathering. People are going to be looking like, them the people? <laughs> what? <laughs> Go ahead. He shall recover the remnant of his people which shall be left from Assyria and from Egypt and from Pathros and from Cush and from Elam and from Shinar and from Hamath and from the islands of the sea. So he named all these black nations and then he got down to us, the islands of the sea. That was the broad, that's a broad general term that covers everything else. Just in case there wasn't no name for y'all back, name for America, it was an island. Yeah. Keep reading. And he shall set up an ensign for the nations, and shall assemble the outcasts of Israel, and gather together the dispersed of Judah from the four corners of the earth. So here's that gathering. Go to um, Matthew 24. This is going to be a, I can't even put a word on it. 
this gathering is just going to be, just imagine people just, I don't know. It's just hard for me to think about it. But let's go to Matthew 24. And we're going to pick it up at verse 29. Go ahead. Immediately after the tribulation of those days shall the sun be darkened, and the moon shall not give her light, and the stars shall fall from heaven, and the powers of the heavens shall be shaken, and then shall appear the sign of the Son of Man in heaven. And then shall all the tribes of the earth mourn, and they shall see the Son of Man coming in the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. So now everybody's going to see Jesus coming. And after he busts heads, he's going to get his people. Go ahead. And he shall send his angels with a great sound of a trumpet, and they shall gather together his elect from the four winds, from one end of heaven to the other. Now we read that in Isaiah, right? He's going to gather his elect from the four winds, north, south, east, and west. You coming. He's going to gather his elect. And somebody else is coming up too. 1 Thessalonians 4. Physical Israel is, is going to be gathered. And here comes spiritual Israel. The ones that's coming up out that ground. They coming too. Because ultimately, everybody going to be Israel. Because you can't go no other way. The Lord said, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. Ain't no shortcuts. You either come through Israel or you don't come at all. It's 1 Thessalonians 4. Pick it up at verse 13. Go ahead. But I would not have you to be ignorant. But I would not have you to be ignorant, brethren, concerning them which are asleep, that ye sorrow not, even as others which have no hope. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so them also which sleep in Jesus will God bring with him. For this we say unto you by the word of the Lord, that we which are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them which are asleep. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we, which are alive and remain, shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. So this is spiritual Israel coming up out the ground, and those that are alive, when the Lord comes back, they get to change Israel. The physical Israel is being gathered, and now we have spiritual Israel coming up out the ground. Let's go to Revelation 5, and let's see where we're going to be. Revelation 5. We're going to pick it up at verse 8. Revelation 5 and 8. Because contrary to popular belief, you ain't going to heaven. You ain't going. Sorry. There's no vacancy up there. Revelation 5 and 8, go ahead. And when he had taken the book, the four beasts and four and twenty elders fell down before the Lamb, having every one of them harps and golden vials full of odors, which are the prayers of saints. And they sung a new song, saying, Thou art worthy to take the book and to open the seals thereof. For thou wast slain and hast redeemed us to God by the blood out of every kindred, and tongue, and people, and nation, and made us unto our God kings and priests, and we shall reign on the earth. So we're going to be reigning on the earth with Jesus. He's going to gather us up, teach us, and get this thing right the way it's supposed to be. Zechariah 14. And let's see what, what, see, let's see what high day we're going to be keeping <laughs> when the Lord comes back. And it amazes me, we're going to keep it when he gets back, but we ain't got to keep it now. That's, that's kind of strange. Mm -hmm. Zechariah 14, and pick it up at verse 1. 14 and 1. Okay, go ahead. Behold. 
The day of the Lord cometh, and thy spoil shall be divided in the midst of thee. So we're talking about the day of the Lord, right? This is Jesus. Skip down to verse 4. And his feet shall stand in that day upon the Mount of Olives, which is before Jerusalem on the east. And the Mount of Olives shall cleave in the midst thereof toward the east and toward the west. And there shall be a great, a very great valley. And half of the mountain shall remove toward the north and half of it toward the south. So it says his feet shall stand. Who's his feet? Jesus. Because it says in Acts chapter 1, that was the last place that his feet left. When he ascended up, because the angels told him, look, the same Jesus that you see, he's going to come back in like manner. So we know this is Jesus. Go ahead. And ye shall flee to the valley of the mountains, for the valley of the mountain shall reach unto Azel. Yea, ye shall flee like as you fled from before the earthquake in the days of Uzziah, king of Judah. And the Lord my God shall come, and all the saints with thee. Okay, skip down to verse 16. So the Lord is coming with his saints. He busting heads, cleaning house. And once everything is, once the dust settles, let's see what happens. Verse 16, go ahead. And it shall come to pass that every one that is left of all the nations which came against Jerusalem shall even go up from year to year to worship the king, the Lord of hosts, and to keep the Feast of Tabernacles. So every nation that's left, they're going to go up year to year to worship the king, which is Jesus, the Lord of hosts, and to do what? Keep the Feast of Tabernacles. Keep reading. And it shall be that whoso will not come up of all the families of the earth unto Jerusalem to worship the king, the Lord of hosts, even upon them shall be no rain. And if the family of Egypt go not up and come not that have no rain, there shall be the plague wherewith the Lord will smite the heathen that come not up to keep the Feast of Tabernacles. You see how serious this feast is? The Lord said, if you don't come up and keep this feast, you ain't going to have no rain. And then if you don't come up and keep it, you're going to get some plagues. So how are you going to take this feast and say we don't have to keep it no more if the Lord is going to institute it when he gets back? Come on now. You're supposed to be keeping this hiding because the book says it's a statue forever. Yeah, finish 19. Go ahead. This shall be the punishment of Egypt and the punishment of all nations that come not up to keep the Feast of Tabernacles. So not only is Egypt going to get punished, but it says all nations. You've got to come up year to year to keep this feast. Let's go to Micah chapter 4. And we're wrapping it up. Micah chapter 4. People think the Lord is playing. I'm telling you. Read your Bibles, people. Read your Bible. Micah chapter 4. And we're going to pick it up at verse 1. Micah 4 and verse 1. Okay, go ahead. But in the last days it shall come to pass that the mountain of the house of the Lord shall be established in the top of the mountains, and it shall be exalted above the hills, and people shall flow unto it. And many nations shall come and say, Come, and let us go up to the mountain of the Lord and to the house of the God of Jacob, and he will teach us of his ways, and we will walk in his paths. For the law shall go forth of Zion, and the word of the Lord from Jerusalem. And he shall judge among many people and rebuke strong nations afar off. And they shall beat their swords into plowshares and their spears into pruning hooks. Nations shall not lift up a sword against nation, neither shall they learn war any more. But they shall sit every man under his vine and under his fig tree, and none shall make them afraid. For the mouth of the Lord of hosts have spoken it. So when Israel goes back home, it's going to be peace. If the man is calling him a Jew now is, is back home, how come it ain't no peace? He ready to jump on Iran. And it's supposed to be peace over there? That means somebody, hey, you ain't the man. You're not the one. 
Because the Lord said when Israel goes home, it's going to be peace. We just read this. Skip down to verse 6. In that day, saith the Lord, will I assemble her that haunteth, and I will gather her that is driven out, and her that I have afflicted. And I will make her that haunted a remnant, and her that was cast far off a strong nation. And the Lord shall reign over them in Mount Zion from henceforth even forever. So in that same day, to say the Lord, I will assemble her that is haunted, and I will gather her that is driven out, and her that I have afflicted. And I will make her that is haunted a remnant, and her that was cast far off a strong nation. So we're going to be strong. We're going to be strong. Let's go to um, Psalm 147. Psalm 147. We're going to read a couple of verses here. Psalm 147, and pick it up at verse, we're going to read 1 and 2. Okay, go ahead. Praise ye the Lord, for it is good to sing praises unto our God, for it is pleasant, and praise is comely. The Lord doth build up Jerusalem, he gathereth together the outcasts of Israel. So the Lord builds up Jerusalem, and he gathereth together the outcasts of Israel. So there's some light at the end of the tunnel. Okay, we're going to be gathered. We're going to be gathered. We just got to live out every sentence of this curse until the Lord comes back in person and get his people. I'm going to throw in Jeremiah 31 real quick. Jeremiah 31. And then y'all should be pretty full. And a couple more scriptures. Jeremiah 31. And we're going to pick it up at verse 10. Jeremiah 31. And verse 10. Okay, go ahead. Hear the word of the Lord, O ye nations. So hear the word of the Lord. Now this is the word of the Lord talking. Go ahead. And declare it in the isles afar of off. And declare it all over in the islands afar of off. What else? Go. And say, he that scattered Israel will gather him and keep him as a shepherd doth his flock. So the same one that scattered Israel is going to be the same one that gathered Israel. And who is that he? None other than Jesus. Go ahead. For the Lord hath redeemed Jacob and ransomed him from the hand of him that was stronger than he. Therefore, they shall come and sing in the height of Zion and shall flow together to the goodness of the Lord for wheat and for wine and for oil and for the young of the flock and of the herd. And their souls shall be as a watered garden and they shall not sorrow any more at all. Then shall the virgin rejoice in the dance, both young men and old together. For I will turn their mourning into joy and will comfort them and make them rejoice from their sorrow. And I will satiate the soul of the priest with fatness, and my people shall be satisfied with my goodness, saith the Lord. Okay, let's go to Deuteronomy 16. So this is going to be a joyous occasion, okay? It's going to be a big party. You're going to be free. No more captivity. It's going to be nice not to work and still get paid. Deuteronomy 16. Deuteronomy 16. And we're going to pick it up at verse 13. Deuteronomy 16. And pick it up at verse 13. Go ahead. Thou shalt observe the Feast of Tabernacles seven days. After that, thou hast gathered in thy corn and thy wine. So we're going to observe the Feast of Tabernacles for seven days. Go ahead. And thou shalt rejoice in, the, and thou shalt rejoice in thy feast. So we're going to rejoice in this feast. Go ahead. Thou and thy son and thy daughter and thy manservant and thy maidservant and the Levite the stranger and the fatherless and the widow that are within thy gates. So the Lord didn't leave anybody out of this feast. If you want to follow the God of Israel, stranger, non-stranger, whatever, come on and join this feast. Amen. Go ahead. 
Seven days shalt thou keep a solemn feast unto the Lord thy God in the place which the Lord shall choose. Because the Lord thy God shall bless thee in all thine increase and in all the works of thine hands. Therefore, thou shalt surely rejoice. Three times in a year shall all thy males appear before the Lord thy God in the place which he shall choose. In the feast of unleavened bread and in the feast of weeks and in the feast of tabernacles. And they shall not appear before the Lord empty. So three times a year, the Feast of Weeks, Feast of Unleavened Bread, Feast of Weeks, and the Feast of Tabernacles. And you shall not appear before the Lord empty. Do not come in here on an empty stomach looking to be fed. Don't come here empty. We, gotta, we do this feast ourselves. Everybody must contribute. If you don't contribute with the food, there's the box right there. But you got to contribute. Why? Verse 17. Every man shall give as he is able, according to the blessing of the Lord thy God, which he hath given thee. So every man is going to give able according to the blessing of the Lord thy God, which he hath given thee. So to lift up, whatever the Lord blessed you with, contribute. Now let's flip back to Deuteronomy 14, because the Lord said we're going to rejoice and have a good time. And every now and then I like to read this. Just for the new people. Any new people? Yeah, we got some new folks here. Deuteronomy 14, go ahead, verse 22. Thou shalt truly tithe all the increase of thy seed, and the field bring it forth year by year. And thou shalt eat before the Lord thy God in the place which he shall choose to place his name there. The tithe of thy corn, of thy wine, and of thine oil, and the firstlings of thy herds and of thy flocks that thou mayest learn to fear the Lord thy God always. And if the way be too long for thee, so that thou art not able to carry it, or if the place be too far from thee, which the Lord thy God shall choose to set his name there, when the Lord thy God hath blessed thee, then shalt thou turn it unto money, and bind up the money in thine hand, and shall go unto the place which the Lord thy God shall choose. So if the way, if the journey is too long for you and you can't bring your flocks there, sell them, take the money, and go to the place where the Lord has chosen and do what? And thou shalt bestow that money for whatsoever thy soul lusteth after. So you take that money and you buy whatever your soul lusteth after. For instance, go ahead. For oxen, or for sheep, or for wine. Or for strong drink. So for wine, we know what wine is, right? right. And what's strong drink? That's Patron Silver. <laughs> Keep reading. Or for whatsoever thy soul desires, and thou shalt eat there before the Lord thy God, and thou shalt rejoice, thou and thine household. So we're going to rejoice before the Lord because we understand what this Feast of Tabernacles represent. And I hope you got some understanding in Jesus' name. Amen.